plussed up by YouTube, so we're just going to chill until uh, 30 seconds goes by because I don't know why YouTube's new system, the first 30 seconds, they mess everything up. Um, but hi, my name is Davison. I'm a YouTube creator. This is my vlogging channel. My main channel is youtube.com slash davisonvideo1. I try different fun things on the internet, and today I am about to inflate a giant high heel. So I'm going to repeat that one more time because YouTube always messes up the beginning of this. I'm about to inflate a giant high heel and then sit in it. I got my little inflating machine. I've got my floor back there. So if you like inflatables, hello, say hi. There's two people here. You want to see me blow up a giant high heel? And then I'm going to take pictures in the giant high heel and uh, post them to my private Snapchat. My private Snapchat is available on patreon.com slash Davidson video. I have no idea how big this thing is going to be. Uh, that's what she said. But we're gonna, it's supposedly huge. It's like a giant high heel. See, and then I sit in the middle of it. You guys excited? Nobody's saying anything. I'm going to share this. Hold on. I'm, sh I'm sharing this to my Twitter. Uh, live now. Live now. Davison is inflating a giant high heel inflatable. There we go. I just tweeted it. That means two more people are going to show up. Who's here? You guys are lurkers. Hello, lurkers. One, or one of you, the YouTube moderators, you're like, this is the this is what I do when I think I'm being moderated live, and they're like, they're like spying. You hi Red. Yeah, you can watch this later. I'm gonna upload this. This is a total experiment, and this is because of the Jello wrestling. I have this uh, machine that can inflate anything. You can recharge it. Uh, so anyhow, we're just gonna start this. So this is technically a pool floaty, but it's gonna turn into a giant high heel. Let's do this, people. I gotta get the right nozzle. I don't know what the right nozzle is. See, they got all these nozzles, and I got a schnozzle. Okay. So I got this for free when I was at ClamorCon, and I wanted to make a video with these things a long time ago and take them to the pool, but it was a really crappy summer last year. Oh wait, no, this isn't a high heel. Oh no, this is the cherry. I, okay, wait, I gotta go get the high heel because there's also a cherry. Okay, welcome my vajuju. Looks like it's huge. It's like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. Let me get the high heel because this is wrong. This is the cherry. Sorry, technical cherry difficulties. I gotta go get the high heel. Hold on, I don't wanna inflate the cherry. That's what she said. Okay, here we go. Huge, 91 inch high heel. This is what I was supposed to inflate, but meanwhile I got out the cherry. Oh, Davison always getting out the cherry when you need to be getting out the high heel. So here it is. It's by Kangaroo. It's 91 inches. It's supposed to go in your pool. I got my thing to inflate. Smells like vinyl. Oh my God. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Oh yeah, holy crap, that is huge. That is huge. <laughs> Say hi if you're here. I see there's seven here. Okay. Uh, oh, it's not that nozzle. It's like a big nozzle. I like them big nozzles. You guys are all lurkers, being creepy. Only Red said hi. Okay, we're inflating, we're inflating. I hope I 
it'll just lay on it. I hope I can sit in it. It looks like you can sit in it, but maybe you're gonna have to lay on it. That's disappointing. I thought I was gonna be able to sit in it. Because on the box, it makes it look like you can sit in it, but maybe it's just flat. Here. Why are you guys not saying hi? <laughs> That's an annoying noise. You guys can probably hear, hear it less than I can. Enjoy work, Red, by the way. It's not looking so good, guys. Shit. Can't believe my machine's dying. No. My machine's dying. It's not what I thought it was. This is very disappointing. I'm glad I didn't, I guess I'll take photos on it regardless, but I'm going to have to recharge my machine. My machine is not, barely held a charge. Fuck. Fuck. And what's weird about this is I inflated a giant pool with this machine. And uh, it inflated without issue, but now this thing is barely inflating it, which is odd. So spread it out. And it's not what I thought. It's just a giant flat pool floaty. It's not something you can sit in. See? It's disappointing. Oh, uh, hi, hi. Hey, say solvent. How's it going, Martin? You're watching me try to do something and failing at it, which is basically the story of my entire career. I'm kidding. Some things I succeed at. I thought that that was going to be a giant peel that I could sit in, um, but it's just a flat it's a flat pool floaty. It's not something with like a, an indent in it that you can actually like sit in. So that was news to me and my machine to inflate it just failed. Um, shit happens, especially when you're live. And this now I know. I was just like, I was going to inflate it to take photos in it anyway. So I was like, okay, well, I might as well just go live and show them. See, you can see it. It's enormous. It looks small, but it's like. 10 feet tall. Um, so Mr. Field says, have you seen those cool shaped pillows that when you buy them, you get a regular rectangle with a photo print of the cool pillow you want? <laughs> no, but that's what this feels like. This feels like 
Here, I'm gonna plug in my inflator because I gotta. I want to take photos on this. Fuck. Um, this is a disappointment. Things don't always turn out the way you think when you buy weird shit off of Amazon. Though I didn't buy it from Amazon, it was given to me um, at an influencer event to use in videos by Cooper Games. So this is from Cooper Games. I mean, if you want a giant flat pool floaty, it's cool. But if you wanted a giant high heel to sit in, it, it's, that's not what this is. And so that's a little bit of a disappointment. And I'm feeling kind of rough today. Hi, Frank. Uh, so once my device to inflate the damn thing uh, recharges, I'll finish inflating it. Then I'll take some photos and post them on um, Instagram. I have to finish edit editing my, hey, Alden, uh, my Jello wrestling video. Uh, I haven't, it, it's been so much harder to finish it than you guys can even possibly imagine. And, um, man, there's, I'll show you the other floaties. Why not? Here, let me show you. So there's the cherry, as you guys saw. And there's huge eggs and a giant hot dog. So I got a cherry, hot dog, eggs, and a giant high heel, which is pretty cool. These could be cool to give away, because what am I going to do with the, hey, what am I going to do with the giant hot dog? Hey. Uh, building a life raft. Yeah, this is my escape plan from YouTube. I'm going to float off towards Patreon. Much better lands, much, much, much uh, more um, prosperous lands. If you want to, if you want to join me after I, I arrive, uh, after I hit shoreline, come to patreon.com slash Davison video. <laughs> And pay ten dollars a month because <laughs> they're better land. It's a better land. I'm like a pilgrim. I'm a YouTube pilgrim on a, on, on her maiden voyage towards Patreon. It's better lands than uh, YouTube. Who else is here? What are you guys up to? Where's my coffee? I can't handle failure this early in the morning. Or maybe I can. I can handle lots of failure. You have to be able to handle lots of failure to be a YouTuber, guys be a human being you have to be able to handle failure. <laughs> uh, I look tired. I feel tired. I am tired. My high heel isn't what I wanted it to be. This sucks. <laughs> Watch me fail. <laughs> do I delete this or do I leave this pathetic display up? for five people's viewing pleasure. I feel like such a pilgrim right now. Guys, say something. You're killing me. I know you're just listening to me. I know some of you guys listen to me at work, so you're depending on me continuing to talk. <laughs> Red Camaro says, Dave's video starts hilarity and sues success or fail. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this was this was a fucking fail. <laughs> we didn't land on YouTube Rock. YouTube Rock landed on us, indeed. It's hot today, too. I also have a freaking expensive ass uh, air conditioning unit right there, Danby. See that, that I have to install because it's actually feeling really humid in here today, which means it's gonna be blistering hot. Oh, look at my red nose. Um, so I'm gonna have to set that up because if I don't set that up, then what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to roast and I won't be able to finish editing because editing is really hard in the summer because I don't know why it's editing. The activity is just better suited towards a very cool environment. Maybe your brain works faster in cool environments. Sometimes I think that's why Western nations are sometimes, well, no, it's not true because think of China, but it's like there's certain kinds of productivity that are enabled by the cold. This is a theory. Please you feel free to dis disprove me, but the climate, the temperature affects our behavior course um 
I don't know how long it's going to take for my thing to keep uh, charging. And I can't, what sucks about it is that even when you plug it in, it won't allow the power source to, to run the unit. It, it disables the unit when it's charging. I, <laughs> Mr. Fuel says, there are more people in China with an IQ over 135 than citizens in the USA. I don't, I don't, and sometimes I, I just don't doubt that. I don't want to be racist about, you know, intellectual abilities, but I think the, maybe the educational system is better in China. Maybe not. In certain areas, it's certainly not. It's pretty poor in China in certain areas. I think it's just their schooling and their, their, the way they place their priority on, uh, priorities on academics uh, differ from, from ours. Unfortunately, in the, in the United States, especially, they don't spend enough money on education and they don't spend it equally on different schools, right? Certain schools are better off, much, much better off than others. And that creates, you know, ignorance, varying ignorance levels and intellectual disparities that wouldn't exist if everybody got the same training. So Francis, he can attrib uh, attribute to a bad mood. I can attest to that. Yeah, and it just makes you more sluggish in general because your body goes into like, oh, I got to go into like water conservation mode. Um, and just like my whole, I said this before, but people think that you get dehydrated in the heat. You actually retain more water. And when you retain more water, it weighs you down and it just makes movement more painful. So you're actually more bloated when it's like high heat, high humidity than... Uh, until you get to the point right where you're completely dehydrated than you are when it's cooler. It's also the time of the month where I start to get a little sluggish and hormonal. You can tell by the little tiny pimples on my cheeks. Thank you, thank you, Mother Nature. This was supposed to be victorious. This was, I just should never have any expectations. I mean, I should have just put it out there that it was an experiment to me inflating this but I truly thought that it was, because on the box it looks three-dimensional. It's fucking false advertising. Even the small picture, look, it looks three-dimensional, does it not? doesn't look like a flat, flu a flat pool floaty. It looks like you can sit in it. God damn it. Oh, hello, Wall Street. How are you? I've already failed. That's the high heel. I thought you could sit in it. You can just lay on it. And my stupid inflator thing didn't stop functioning. It only inflated it a tiny bit, which is weird because I inflated an entire pool for jello wrestling with no no issue, just like two charges. Yet somehow this thing is taking more air, which is weird. So I can't even lay on it yet and just like display it. And I have to finish the jello wrestling video and it's a lot. It's We shot so much footage and it was so stressful. I thought it was going to be fun. And some of it was fun, but it was bad. It just ended up kind of bad. And I mean, you guys, I mean, not the, not the sexy slow-mo part. That was fine. That was fun. Um, I was alone for that. But like, I don't know. I, I it just, it just created more stress than I thought it would. Um, and more like fallout. So now going through it, it's like, ooh. Ugh. There you go, get two of them, strap them together, it'll make a chair, a uh, heel chair. I actually think these things are quite expensive. I think these things are close to a hundred bucks each. Let me look this up. Cooper Games. Uh, huge high heel inflatable. High heeled shoes that look like inflatable sex dolls. What? Oh, that's interesting. An artist made a high heel that looks like a lady. That's cool. This is, I can share this. This is fine. It's just a, you guys will see this. Just a minute. Let me just link to this in the chat. You want to look at what I'm looking at. Um, oh, and there's a high heel that looks like a chicken. <laughs> okay, and a high heel that looks like a car. This is not what we're looking for. We're looking for this. Amazon Prime, 16 reviews. Oh, the high heel only got like three and a half stars on Amazon. That's not a good sign. 
Really? It's only 1995? Huh. That's actually surprising. I thought these, but Cooper Games, I think uh, the price was higher. But yeah, actually, you can get these. These are only 20 bucks each. Huh. Hi, John. You're doing Oregon Trail for real, so you're on the road? Well, do you guys think I should give these inflatables away during a live broadcast? Uh, so John says, did you lose some patrons since your last stream? I remember wrongly. It was 365, now 340. Yeah, well, I lose them on and off. See, the thing is, some people only pledge for a term. So they'll pledge for, say, three months. I believe that's an option. And then once the three months ends, you, uh, Patreon automatically removes them. So I that's why I send an email at the beginning of the month reminding everyone to re-pledge. And then I get everyone back or I get a lot of people back because they're term ends. And then they have to decide if they want to continue to be a patron or if they want to continue to support me on my private Snapchat. Um, this month, it looks like I've only lost two people on my private Snapchat. Uh, they, of course, get to live out their whatever they paid for until the first. And then I remove them if they don't pledge again. Uh, but it's weird because people also do a thing where they pledge in the same day they delete because they don't want it to auto renew, which is annoying because then, well, I get the money. I get the money immediately. Um, so during the month, I'm actually getting money that's coming in, like more so than you guys might think, uh, because I get people who just want to trial it, which is normal, right? Like they're curious. They want to see what the deal is. Maybe they're like, this is worth 10 bucks a month. And the, or they're like, this totally isn't. Um, I've been totally keeping up more. I've been giving people more than, than they realize. It is superhuman to make two pieces of original content on top of all the other original content I make per week alone. The last video, the Jello wrestling video cost me a thousand dollars. The fucking hotel room feeding my cast and crew, um, the materials, it was a thousand dollars. So that's a thousand off of like whatever I've earned. And it's just, to, you know, I have to give people what they're paying for, right? But uh, because people are used to free media on YouTube, they just presume that it's like zero effort, like they set up, shoot, get out of there. No, um, I feel that I'm, I, if anything, I feel like I've been giving too much and it's been burning me out because twice a week is just so much, but I'm willing to do it because people are paying, you know, they're paying for, for additional media. And um, the new series is called Censored Uncensored. And it's my, if it, if it works out the way that I hope it will, I might switch to only once a week, but it'll be much higher quality than if I'm doing it twice a week and I'll have my cameraman all the time and we will come to an agreement as to how much it costs. And then I'll handle the editing from, from uh, there on in. Um, but yeah, uh, at least it's fun. I hope I, this is a job. I mean, it is fun. Like, I mean, I enjoy going live right now and shooting the shit with you guys and trying shit and, it still counts as my job. And maybe even I've already made like a dollar just going live. I would have inflated this piece of shit anyways. Mind you, I'm spending more time talking to you guys. Um, is it fun? I mean, there's sacrifices to everything. Making more and more money. I've always said this. I love running a profitable business and I love seeing the fruits of my labor. That's fine. However, there's so much more that goes on behind the scenes Things are so much more complicated. Even just scheduling people to show up for a day is is an effort. Um, so it's it's not all fun and games what I do. And and maybe I'm doing a great job if you think it just looks like it was easy. It just happened. It's cute. It's happy. I'm that I'm doing my job right because you are being you are being spared the behind the scenes struggles, and the struggles are real. Um. So subscription has options for patrons. Yes, it does. You should try, John. Just just pledge the $10. You'll see there's already like 95 or 96 videos. The last one's kind of cool. I'm rolling around in jello. I did the leg part I like the best where my legs are in the jello. I just wonder how you could avoid your subscribers on Snapchat and Patreon to copy the content and post it elsewhere. Uh, well, there, I have a no screen cap rule on uh, my Snapchat. Uh, if that, if I catch them, I'll get takedowns. 
I have copy protected content on Vimeo. People can't easily, they can do screen record, but uh, eventually I'll have to hire someone to do takedowns, but you can register your videos. And I mean, the people that want to support me are going to want to support me regardless, but people pay for Netflix, right? So I think people are going to continue to pay for my Patreon, uh, pa Patreon provided that I'm giving them good entertainment value and they feel like it's justified. Oh, I missed everything. Got a phone call from my grandpa asking to pay in a shed. That's okay. We we're just shooting the, the shit about Patreon and why my, my number went down, but it's completely normal. There are fluctuations in numbers all the time on Patreon. And we're towards the end of the month. So people, some people are like, oh, I don't want to auto renew or, oh, I have extra bills. So I'm going to unpledge. But I'll get them. I, I mar remarket myself. I'll be like, okay, you left, but you're missing out on this. And then people are like, oh, well, and they consider the $10 and they're like, wait, that's only the cost of two coffees. It really is only the cost of two coffees. So I want to come back. Are you a patron? I, I take it you're not a patron yet. It's obviously, well, you take a guess, John. So are you my patron or not? <laughs> Everyone hit the like button if you're here. Don't get dysentery, um, Wall Street. Alden's right. Who's messaging me? Oh, my son. I have school. Oh, I didn't know you had school today. It's worth it. I'm a patron. Thanks, Alden. You did comment on one of my things, if I recall correctly. And I know Efrain's my, he's on both levels. He's on the regular and the Snapchat. Because when you pay for the Snapchat, you get the regular. Although yesterday, I for, for fucking psycho reasons, I could not post on my Snapchat. It was just a bad day. You look like you have a lot of tasks to complete. Am I right? Today? Yes. <laughs> and I'm, look, I'm, I don't know why my fucking nose is red from blowing it. Because I was getting over another cold. Of course, of course. No rest for the wicked. The lighting is shit. What is, what is up with the fucking lighting? Pissing me off. This is bullshit. Bullshit, man. Oh, look, now it changed colors. <laughs> I should take a day off. I should take it. What I want when my fucking son finishes his fucking semester is I want it to go away. Let's go live in Miami or something for a month, please. Let's go live in the Hamptons. At least you don't look like orange like in the past. <laughs> At least there's that. At least I have that to live for. Yeah, I, there's currently definitively like an imbalance in my life where like, I mean, it's always been like this where it's like, really, I'm not really doing anything other than creating and working, which is great. It has like great, you know, financial or artistic benefits, but I really want more of like a social life than I currently have. Okay, I'm just right back to my son. Hold on. Okay, Andreas, you're cheap though. But thank you for your tip last episode. Fine, go to McDonald's, one and a half to get a Big Mac. That's how much it costs to support me a month. Big Mac trio, super sized. Me, 95 videos, Big Mac trio. Big Mac trio, you shit out. Me, you get to experience multiple times. Do you think girls would accept an offer for a holiday a trip without commitment? No, I think I think any <laughs> any offer for hanging out with someone and being intimate with them without commitment is a waste of fucking time for most women. Maybe guys like it because then they don't have to do any emotional fucking labor. But for a woman to spend time with someone and get attached to them only to like, um, you know, be be discarded because they don't their their purpose of being a an empty vagina penis receptacle was served is just fuck that i'd rather fucking go to, go on vacation to fucking 7-eleven okay oh get a giant ass slurpee then go on vacation with some fucker it's gonna use me like a fucking 
come dumpster for a week and then never call me again or just dismiss me. Fuck that. Fuck that. You want to come down dumpster your fucking hand. Take your hand on vacation. <laughs> yes, girls usually like commitments with men they have interest in. Of course they do. If you actually love someone, you don't want them to fuck around with you. It's like enough fuckery. Why like what like, it's like what am I getting out of this? Like what I'm getting heartache. I'm getting I'm getting I'm not getting my needs fulfilled. I'm getting teased. I'm getting being given a quarter of what I need. No, we don't like it. It's not fun. There's no fun in casual. There's no fun in being the side chick. There's no, uh, uh, only rarely does somebody, you know, I mean, people can meet all sorts of ways. And yes, people are in the wrong relationships and then they leave their partners and then end up with somebody else. But if the deal's just like casual, like I just, there maybe there's a very brief phase in a lot of young women's lives where they're like, they want the casual thing when they're like super horny at like 20. But other than that, most women don't mo there. I mean, again, there are some exceptions, but most women don't want to just fuck around constantly. It's boring. It's so much more value in a deep emotional connection with fucking as opposed to just fucking. Nobody wants to use guys for meals. Are you fucking kidding me? Like I don't buy my own fucking Slurpee. Oh, okay. Bye, Red. So, Mr. Field says, I've known women who figured out if they continually do first dates to get everything for free. It just seems like, how sad must your life be if that's what you do? I really think that's the minority of women. Why waste your time getting dressed up? Why waste your time leaving your house for a $20 meal? Girls, like, you're not taking care of yourself financially if that's a motivation. That is a poor, as far as I'm concerned, that is a poor use of your time. Take your fucking $20 and buy some stock. Don't soak some guy. Most girls do have good intentions when they hang out with the guys or they're trying to figure it out. And most people, if they're wasting someone else's time, time and like seeing them, but then it's not advancing, it's because they are trying to figure it out. Because people usually ultimately do not end up wasting each other's times, time ad infinitum. You know, um, why though it's not is it not better to have all with no commitment for man is this for girls or men's different i don't think it's good for anyone i i mean but guys maybe they don't want to deal with a girl being sad they don't want to deal with m monogamy or the monotony that could come with monogamy they don't want to forsake all others they don't they don't want to have a girl expect them at home a certain time they don't want to help the girl fix her apartment they don't want to help the girl uh, when she's injured they just want the good parts of the relationship without the, the you know the 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 this challenging realities and all relationships have challenges you know there's no such thing as a relationship that's like devoid of like you gotta make an effort come on no come on children you might hope that it could be that way maybe for brief moments it's that way but i don't know you got to be real and real is like the whole deal. It's not half a deal. And if it's half a deal, eventually one of you is going to fucking leave. Rabbit Chrome. Are you single? I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. I guess I'm single. Speaking of which I got a new match on Bumble. Oh, John, you're officer of the watches, aren't you? You're not. What? What was that noise then? Hold on a second. Okay. Um. What happened? I had a weird noise on my phone before. And I don't know what that was. Weird. Hi, Sid. I was inflating a giant inflatable heel, and unfortunately, it's not what I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be something I could sit in. 
but unfortunately it's flat as a pancake. And uh, my, what is it called? Uh, machine that you use to inflate something. My, what is it called? Oh, air pump. Blast, rechargeable air pump. It, it uh, lost its charge, so I couldn't finish inflating it. <laughs> Andrea says, having chickens in the house is not great for relationships, so I think I'll stay single. <laughs> well, I don't think it's very healthy from a respiratory system point of view to, to, to live with chickens. They're meant to be in chicken coops. Uh, hi there, T. Jones or T. Lee. So I had a girl that I dated three times and invited her to join my business trip, but she refused. She was 32, and at later point she says she needs more moves from me. I wonder what, what she wanted more. We broke up. I don't know. She didn't. I don't know. Who knows what was going on with her? It's just weird. Well, they're in a box with a screen on top. Just make sure that it's healthy to live with chickens and chicken feces indoors. If it's not, then a woman has every right to be like, you're unlivable, Andreas, because it's completely silly to live with chickens if they could cause you <laughs> health issues. <laughs> but if you want to live, do the edge play with the chicken coop in the kitchen, you do you, boo. You do you, boo-boo. I'm, I'm having an okay day, but look, my nose is all red. My eyes are puffy. My high heel didn't inflate. I'm not done editing. So I haven't set up my air conditioner. I'm whining. I mean, we're all having fun. Having a woman in life seems problematic for me. Seeing even Davison broke up, uh, it seems difficult. Uh, well, I mean... You break up if you're not compatible. I mean, some of my break, I mean, maybe all of my breakups are justified. I couldn't continue with my ex-husband because he doesn't want to make YouTube videos with me. What I want is a man like Julian and Jenna, you know, Julian, Julian, um, what's his last name? It's not Julian Smith. I know, I know a Julian Smith. Julian, what the fuck is Julian's last name? Just Julian. Doesn't matter. But anyhow, Julian and Jenna Marbles like that, or like Jeffree Star and Nathan. Nathan is so fucking cute. Nathan is my type of guy. Um, you know, that we make videos together, that we're, we win together, the raffle. So basically I want a Steven, and I've said this before, but the problem with Steven, I'm gonna spoil the, spoil the ambiguity right now, is that Steven has a girlfriend. So it's fucked up. So it's, what sucks right now is that I can't have what I want with Steven. So I need a replacement Steven. So it's bad, okay? It's bad and it's weird. And it's we have a weird dynamic and it's like uh, fucked up. So I think also at the point with Steven, even though like, ugh, I don't know what's happening. I don't even want to talk about that, but it's fucked up. So like my ex-husband or ex-boyfriend couldn't give me that. So uh, even if we tried, but he had other issues. He was addicted to vaping. He was addicted to, to drinking a lot of wine all the time. He loved to go to the pub on Saturday and I'd always let him. But like, it's like, you're getting drunk again. Yay, congratulations. Nice lifestyle you have there, bud. Plus I'm more active than my ex-husband was. I, I'm i more health conscious. We just, we were just too, even though we um, emotionally in some weird way, ways we were very comfortable together. And I can to this day depend on my ex-husband emotionally to like comfort me and, and listen to me and all that other shit. Um, we don't want the same things out of life and we can never, I can never give him the white picket fence he wants and he can never give me the Jenna and Julian dynamic, which I've been looking for for the last 10 years. And I failed repeatedly to find, or I sort of, and I've sort of reached the point where I found something close, but not enough. So I don't, until you meet the right person, of course it's going to be bullshit. Of course it's, it's not going to work, right? It doesn't work till, till it does. And some people lock out and meet it soon and other people don't. And if you, and also too, some people stay too long and shit that's not good for them. I mean, I maybe stayed a little too long, but I mean, now I'm out of it and I'm, you know, starting over. There's like three to 4 billion guys out there. You may just fill these voids yourself. No, 
that is such bullshit. I, I'm sorry. I have built a business on my own. I have shot videos on my own. I have raised a child on my own. I have maintained a, an apartment on my own. I bought stocks on my own. I have literally done everything you can possibly do in life alone. And there is a moment at which you do want someone else in your life. And it's not unreasonable. And it's not because you need to fucking find yourself. I have very much at my age found myself. I know who I am. I know what I like. I know what I want. It's just finding a deal that doesn't hurt or do isn't dysfunctional. That's it. It's that simple. I'm not going to fill void. There's the, you can't fill the void of a person with yourself. Like that, like the, with the interaction or the companion. You can't. That's why people make friends. Come on. Come on. Now. I do not like the crazy Russian hacker. He's not my type. Yeah, well, you know, you think that that's funny that he doesn't want to make YouTube videos with me and we broke up. I mean, like I told you, there was more than just that. But that is completely valid. I think, okay, this is, the, the, this is what I want to put out there for anybody that's having a hard time making a decision. Think of the thing you like the most. So for Andreas, it happens to be his chickens in his kitchen and you go, okay, if I could never have the chickens, like if it was between never seeing this person again or losing this person and never having my chickens again, which would I choose? And that makes the decision very clear. So it's like YouTube, Versus my son. Well, come on now. I would give up YouTube 40,000 times over and spare my relationship with my son, of course. YouTube versus my ex-husband. Never make another video. Never have, you know, your creative outlet. Never do any of this. I hate to say it, but YouTube won. But it won because of deficiencies in so many other areas. It wasn't just the YouTube thing. But that significantly contributed to my misery, given that we weren't having fun together. And then and, and, and we were leading separate lives. It just, it was not, it didn't make, and it just did not make sense. Ha we're happier apart than we are together. And we're only happy together when we're apart because we're not expecting anything of each other anymore. So, um, yeah, so I can tell who I like and what I like based on going, making this dichotomy in my head and go, if you had to give up YouTube or this person, what would you give up? And everything becomes clear. So you got to figure out what's your thing, like chocolate. Dungeons and Dragons, your business, whatever. Well, thank you, Teely. That's very sweet. Love to you, too. That made me feel very nice. Thank you, Blue Spirit. Oh, it's okay, Teely. You didn't say anything wrong. Or get cats. <laughs> this is a frame. Sid says, I wouldn't do that to you with all the respect you deserve. Thank you. Was your ex-husband South American? No, my ex-husband, uh, well, no, my ex-husband and Max's dad are two different people. I have, um, oh, hold on. My son is messaging me again. Hold on a second. Um. Yeah. So, uh, what was I saying? No, uh, Max's dad, we were only together for like two and a half or three years and then we broke up. So he's half native or a quarter native, a quarter French Canadian. And my background is allegedly Jewish and Irish and Scottish and native. Um, and Ita but then my parents did an ancestry test and it said we were Italian, which is like, what? Um, but because there's native in there, on all sides. Um, I think my son ended up looking slightly like native, native as, which is what you're identifying as like South American. He looks kind of like an Indian, like a indigenous Indian. Cause his, his father's quite dark, dark skinned. Um, <laughs> we're both singles so to marry each other. I thank you for the proposal. I, I very much feel blessed to have have been proposed to by so many people in my life, but I, I we don't really know each other now, do we? You only know what you see when the camera's on. I mean, I feel like I'm being real right now. I'm more real on this channel than I am on my main channel. I try to just be nonstop bubbly and effervescent on my main channel, but 
you don't know, you don't know, you know, you like what you see and maybe you're a man with simple needs. I mean, it's actually easier to be with a guy who has simple needs than one that's fucking complicated. Um, so Andrea says, I understand the desire to have someone around and make videos. It's, yes, because it's such a fundamental part of me. Like I would still want my dude to have his own life. I need space. I can't have someone in my face 24 seven. I also, I also learned that in my, my 15 year relationship, but no, I know what I want and I keep trying and failing, but that's normal. I keep trying to find it and failing. And what's going to have to happen with Steven is that we, either we fix the weirdness or we don't. And if we don't, I do, there's nothing I can more I can do. I, I, I have tried. I have tried many times. I'm very fair. I'm fun. I pay whatever payment doesn't even matter but if it's too weird and it's creating a conflict of interest for him and it's creating suffering for me then we can't do it anymore have you tried outsourcing outsourcing what Exit what out the window? Would you date your subscribers if they prove you're genuine and serious? I would have to meet them. I, I'm not just going to randomly date some subscribers. That seems like a bad idea. Uh, you can meet anyone anywhere. I'll put that out there. Uh, but I'm not just going to be like, yes, I would date all of my subscribers. Congratulations. We're all dating. Some weird way we're all dating. <laughs> 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 Some of your comments, guys. <laughs> what? What? What are you guys freaking out to? <laughs> Uh, I I think that it's better if you find someone local because you to get to know someone you it requires a significant amount of time in person. So preferably that lives in Montreal at furthest maybe Ottawa or Toronto, but even then Toronto the person would have to move. Um Ah okay, got it. Blue spirit. T. Lee says, real talk, I met my wife online and just celebrated our 16th anniversary. She's Mexican, Spanish, and I'm Jamaican, American, Cuban, and it has been ups and downs, but it's as good as it gets. Well, I'm glad for you. Very happy for you. Yeah, Old Montreal does have fried cheese curds. It's delicious. I have to constantly hold myself back from eating too much cheese and, and gravy and fries here. I, I, I think that right now is like a bad time to try to date me. Let's just put put it that way. I don't think I'm in the mood to date. I mean, I go on Bumble and I want to die every time that I swipe. So I have unfinished business and unresolved issues, if we're going to be perfectly honest. So I can't, I just can't right now. So you, I mean, you're welcome to be my subscriber and we can hang out and get to know one another. Just I don't really want anybody to try to date me right now, please. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> Exactly. So it sounds says, let's change the fucking subject. Thank you, Sid. It is true. Teely, you're always full of positivity. Real love is unconditional. I agree with that. And if it's going to work out with someone, you fix your fucking shit. It's not a bunch of fucking bullshit. Or back and forth and up and down, and left and right, and mixed and this and this and that, and slow dance, and then pretend it didn't happen, and make out and pretend it didn't happen, and to do all sorts of shit and just let's just keep pretending it didn't happen and it does let's just keep pretending no thanks i'm done i'm done with pretending it didn't happen or isn't happening we're done okay i'm done <laughs> i'm not gonna pretend that it didn't happen anymore time for me to fight that fucking high heel
See, with the pool, I could just leave it on the ground like that and it would inflate on its own. I don't know if it's inflating on its own unless I push into it. I think it's inflating. I mean, it's more inflated than it was before. <laughs> Eileen said came in time for a booty view. Are you objectifying me, Eileen? I'm highly offended. We're almost at the hour mark. I wasn't expecting to last an hour. Well, thank you, Tee Lee. And Sid's getting fed up with the sweet shit. I like the sweet shit. You can tell if things is working if things keep improving. That's true. And if they don't, they don't. I'm just teasing you, girl. Here you go, Eileen. Though I am not dressed to the nines today. I'm kind of in my crappy, let's just get shit done outfit. And I didn't work out like I said I would yesterday. Oh, come on. Are we really not done inflating? Are we really going to make me keep doing this? How many times am I going to have to reinflate this shit? It is kind of cool, though. I'll just let it die. Like it's still pumping air in there. It's just not as powerful. Yeah, I ha what I have to say about this air is elect electric air pump, this woods, it doesn't hold the charge. Like it doesn't, for some reason, like it doesn't have a charge that, that lasts more than like 15 minutes of inflation time. That's bad. The battery should be more powerful than that. And you should be able to operate it if you plug it in via its uh, adapter. It shouldn't be that it's like one or the other. Yeah, it is. It's a pool floaty uh, blow up shoe. And I thought I was going to be able to sit in it. But unfortunately, it's flat. And I wanted to take pictures on it for my private Snapchat patrons. So I thought if I'm going to inflate this piece of shit, I might as well like go live and just see what happens. Because I thought I actually thought it was going to inflate within two minutes because the the fucking jello wrestling pool inflated so fast, like, well, not fast, but it for the size of it, it just went, it, the pool's right there, actually. It, it totally inflated quickly. So it's kind of confusing to me that this is taking so long. I just think maybe like the, the, the air input valve is not the same. Maybe it's losing air as it's inflating. I don't know. Here, we're going to charge it. Now. My landlord's going to hate me. I just dropped the air pump on the floor. Fun. It needs one more. Get one more round and it's it's inflated. And then I can take some sexy ass pictures on it. And hopefully edit my jello video and then get some fitness in. Yeah, I thought it was like a blow-up chair because that's what it looked like. See? Even the way it looks on the side, it looks like it has depth, but it's flat. And I have other ones. I've got a cherry, I've got a hot dog, and I've got fried eggs. And I think that what I'm gonna do with the other ones is that. I'll give them away for super chats uh, on my main channel. How many floors is your apartment? Well, what do you mean? I'm not going to tell you how many floors my apartment building is. <laughs> I ain't telling you that. <laughs> I'm going to, my goal is to buy a penthouse. Um, I've been bad with my real estate agent and I apologize that I have not returned his messages. Uh, I'm not quite at the position though, where I want to make that jump though. Like my parents will co-sign. I have some money put away and then it would go into the penthouse. Uh, but I don't want to compromise on like, you know, quality. I want it to be really nice. So 
I, the plan was to more or less stay here for another couple of years. And then by then, hopefully if Patreon keeps growing, which I'm thinking it will, but you know, you never know with online bullshit. Um, I can afford it and then, you know, move forward from there. But I mean, for now, like my ex moved out. So I have another room that I haven't even been using that I'm going to turn into like a more of a set, I think, even though there's like a king size bed in there. Um, we'll see. I mean, I haven't even, you know, begun to fix the room and he still has shit in that room. He hasn't taken out yet, but his move was complicated because he moved into a new flat where the, the man's uh, mother used to live and he thought he was moving into an empty apartment. Meanwhile, he's like, Oh, Hey, my mother has Alzheimer's. Why don't you just keep all her stuff? Which you would think would be great. But the problem is, is that there's a lot of junk in there that my ex had to like, has to get rid of like, say like 40 years of fucking older lady junk. So, um, so it's kind of been delaying him moving shit out of here. Cause he can't really move some of his shit out of here until, um, until he gets that apartment cleaned and, and, and I offered to help him. He says, no. So what can I do? I can't, if he tells me he can't, I can't help him clean. I can't help him clean. Um, and nor is it totally my job because I'm, I've been running this house on my own for six months with literally almost no assistance aside from him, like occasionally taking me to get groceries. Um, cause we've been living separate lives for like two and a half or three years. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I'll be a little bit more settled in here. Not that I'm not settled, but more settled and things more organized within the next like two or three months. It's just kind of getting through this kind of weird transitory phase. Can I rent the room? <laughs> Hi, Thomas. Long time no talk. No, no, no. Nobody can rent my room. <laughs> I was I was thinking that. I'm like, I could run an Airbnb from that room because I don't really, I haven't been using it, but I, I don't want strangers. I don't want strangers coming in my house. It's not a revolving door of strangers. I, I, I like my privacy. Um, I don't need the money that much. I mean, this apartment would be perfect though. If I were to move out of here and keep the rent and then rent it on an Airbnb, I'm sure I can make it profitable. But then it's the labor of like letting guests in and cleaning up after guests leave and dealing with guest problems. It's not like it's not without a commitment of time and energy. And I spend so much time and energy doing stuff online. I just don't think. I don't think it's my thing. Um, yeah, Sid says these kinds of things don't look like they do on the box. For instance, the big uh, McDonald's. It's true. Deceptive advertising. Sometimes you get what you you pay for. I just didn't happen to get what I paid for. I mean, I didn't even pay for this. So how can I complain? I got a free from Cooper Games to promote... Uh, in my videos, Cooper games. And I'm not saying it's shit because if you're just looking for uh, a pool floaty and not assuming that it's going to be, uh, I can't find their website. I'll have to, I'll have to find out where I put the fucking insert. Um, but um, yeah, if you're just looking for a flat floaty, then you won't be disappointed with this. I mean, this could fit a very tall person. So a basketball player could float on this because it's, look, look how tall it is. But uh, if you're looking forward to sitting in it, nope. That's, that's, I mean, it's cool. Here's me modeling. This came all the way from Palm Springs, California. I miss the States. I got to go back there. So Alden says, I thought about that too. I have two extra bedrooms, but I don't want people around. Well, yeah, it's like trusting them. I mean, most people aren't going to do you any harm and you can research their backgrounds on Airbnb, but I would not sleep as soundly if I had a complete stranger in my, my house. And for the $50 a night that I might make, or maybe in some cases you make up to like 80 or 90. Some people are open. Some people are optimistic. Some people have no fear. I just am not one of those people.
So Hassan says, why do people seem so angry right now? What do you mean? It would make a good bed. Yeah, we'll see. I'll lay down on it once it's inflated enough. Uh, it's not inflated enough that if I lay down on it, it would support my weight. Because look, it's still like, it's still mushy. Yeah, and especially not with your kid. Exactly. I just, there are other ways. There's so many ways, guys, to make money. And I should make a video about that. Like online, in life, selling, reselling things on eBay, reselling things on Depop. Uh, uh, doing tasks on Fiverr, doing tasks on Mechanical Turk, uh, buying stocks, the right stocks, in, in, you know, learning about investing. There's just so many ways to make income, passive and otherwise, selling e-books uh, that you just, some things are like high effort and low return. And I feel like Airbnb unless you already have a full-time job and you want the experience of receiving a guest once in a while, it's kind of pocket change. You don't see any rich ass people fucking doing the Airbnb thing unless they have multiple units. Like the one unit I stayed in for that penthouse video, there was actually like a, they could remotely change the access code from the keypad. And there was like a, you know, a security camera. So they didn't even have to be there. They literally had a, had a pad that remotely they can go, okay, we've changed the code to 2926. And the guests come and go and the maid shows up one day. That to me is a profitable business because you're not showing up with the key and handing it to your guest and trying to be a super host and baking them motherfucking cookies. Fuck that. I don't want to fucking make anyone cookies. I don't even fucking bake myself cookies. <laughs> um, but it's like, yeah, there's just, it's, it's a beautiful world because right now with our phones, with the internet, there's just so many ways to make money, but be smart about the way that you make money and make sure it aligns with like your goals and your lifestyle. I just don't think that Airbnb fits into mine. Just like I had to com come to the conclusion that I didn't want to sell on eBay. It's just too much effort for too little return. You could do a great job public speaking. Just tone it down. And don't give it away for free. Well, I don't have to tone anything down. Well, I wouldn't be like, hey, motherfuckers. Although there, that is a rhetorical tactic to uh, appeal to your audience that you actually swear because then you seem you, you foster intimacy because you're not censoring yourself so people let down their guard if you let down their guard your guard but if you keep your guard up people keep their guard up, guard up right um no i mean i was a radio host so like I, I i literally was on the radio on a legitimate radio show for a couple of years so talking is not a problem for me <laughs> i was also i've also done voiceover I can also sing fairly well and I should sing more and I've been neglecting that because you, if you don't use it, you lose it. <laughs> hey yourself, motherfucker, says uh, Eileen. Um, the problem is when you give it away for free, there's no incentive to, for getting paid a fabulous amount of money. Well, I mean, I feel like that about my nudity. I charge for my nudity on the internet. I could be like Zoe Berger and show the titties for free on Twitter. But if I show my Twitter titties, nobody's gonna pay for my titties, right? And I do more than, I think I do more erotically be, than burger in the sense that my nudity has context and it's got substance. It's not just gratuitous. It, there are moments where it's gratuitous, obviously, especially on my private Snapchat. But there's like a story, which I think has value. I don't know if I, I mean, I have done public speaking as well. You could probably find one of my talks on here about social media and, and making money online. But um I hope I'm a panelist at a con one day. I feel like I should be, and I'm going to propose that maybe to ClamorCon. I was thinking about that today about how to make money on Patreon because I, I'm going to, I am literally going to clear six figures on Patreon this year, but I have to keep it up. I am very new to my Snapchats. <laughs> I would show you, but then YouTube would delete my channel, um, and that would be giving it away for free. I still need your support though on Patreon because remember, I just told you I have operating costs. I spent a thousand dollars on Jello Wrestling. Okay. That's a quarter of my profits. And then I want to spend more because I want to keep hiring people to be in my videos. Well, I don't think so. I think I'm fine. No, it's not blur, John. 
if you're curious, just join the $10 on Patreon. Go from there. $10 is a very much not a commitment. It is nothing. Okay. And you'll see what you're looking for. If you can afford to go on business trips, I think you can afford $10 US. I think you can. Um, so Hassan said, I, I randomly came out of something and then I forget it. That's normal. People forget what they're doing. So Eileen says, "Is there? I feel like there's a, a con for everything. Is there a Twitter con? I don't think so. I think people had Twitter meetups. I tried to host one once a long time ago, like 2010 or something um, at a beach. But I think that, that all influencer social media cons are kind of rolling into each other at this point. So VidCon is no, no longer just about YouTube. It's about Facebook. It's about Instagram. It's about Snapchat. There was TanaCon. Surely you guys heard what a disaster TanaCon was. Tana Monjo is like a gossipy 20 year old blonde cute party dippy youtuber and she got in over her head and the company that uh she worked with didn't do their job so she's the one that ends up looking bad even though they're partially responsible for the failures of the event you don't think tana Monjo's cute I mean, she's a different style of cute than I am. She's more like the blonde, you know, the blonde bimbo, the blonde, bl blonde bombshell. I'm not a blonde bombshell. I'm more like classically pretty. And I'm not perfect. I'm trying to be more fit. I was also embarrassed that Steven outmatched me physically so much because he trains all the time, perhaps obsessively. And I, I train as much as I can, but I don't, you know, I'm not on my bike eight hours a day. Um, nor am I male, which automatically makes it harder for me to build muscle. She, oh, her, her nails are dirty. I didn't know that. She's not dirty. She's just a, she's like a party girl. She's like the girl in your group. That's the popular one who always does crazy shit and you get a good laugh out of her. She's fun to go drink with. She's always got good stories. She's a bit of a disaster, but it's entertaining and lovable. That's how I see Tana. So you guys don't think Tana's cute? I didn't like that she got lip injections, but they've kind of like, I'm kind of used to them now. Yeah, Eileen, you like Tana. I, I ordered a Tana Mojo sweatshirt. It's coming in the mail. I'm team unverified creator. You've never seen a refrain? Oh my God. I mean, you'll probably be entertained by her refrain. Like I, I, I know Eileen likes her because Eileen likes Shane Dawson and stuff like that. And I found out about her because I did, I recreated the peanut butter baby video and she had talked about the peanut butter baby lady um, or peanut butter baby video and her subscribers were being sent to my video. And I saw in my analytics that it's like, this is the video that's sending you traffic back when, you know, I, I had got more suggested video traffic. It was easier back then. And um, at first I was like, why would anybody want to listen to her talk? But then I realized, no, she's entertaining and she appeals to the mind of teenage girls. It is so much easier to win on YouTube if you appeal to the mind of, of young people, minds of young people. Like she doesn't require a lot of brain cells to just listen to her yammer on. And she's good at like capturing and maintaining your attention. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Field. That's very nice. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very specific taste. I'm a very specific flavor. I'm certainly not like a screaming 20 year old at this point. I mean, I can be weird and silly, but I don't, I mean, if you think everyone else is boring, then you're not going to like Tana. And, and as Eileen says, she does have her funny moments. So Alden says she's one of those girls that speaks at higher frequencies than that of normal humans. You mean her, the speed of her voice or the pitch or what is it? Let me just 
I'm sure you guys can tell by looking at the title, this video has already been demonetized before it was even fucking uploaded. So, so I'm sure you can tell by looking at the title of this video that this video has been demonetized even before it's been fucking uploaded. Yeah, Graveyard Girl is more like me. I think me and Graveyard Girl have a lot more in common than me and Tana. Because Graveyard Girl, she's real. She's got a big personality. She's very smart, Graveyard Girl. Bunny's a smart lady. Um, and she's close to my age, Bunny. Like, Bunny's in her 35. So Bunny and I are, like, very similar. Um, except for she likes makeup and shit more than I do. As you know, like, I, I don't barely wear any makeup. Like, what am I wearing? I don't even know what I'm wearing on my face. Like a little bit of poorly put on mascara and a tiny bit of lip balm. That's it. That's all I'm wearing. So I could never be a makeup guru because I just can't stand slapping makeup on my face all the time. I think she has some man hormones hearing her thick voice. Well, people accuse me of that. They're like, you have a very low voice for a woman. I don't feel like I do, but I feel like there's a range of pitches to my voice. Sometimes my voice is high and cute and sweet and nice. And then sometimes my voice is really, really low, especially if I get serious about things. <laughs> Blue Spirit says, I'm not a fan of the dolls. Hell no. Yeah, her creepy doll, creepy doll thing is, and her obsession with death and her obsession with the Victorian era, that's not my jam. I am, if you look around my apartment, it's all cute things, right? Like, it's like, oh, he did a backflip during my live workout session. Oh, look, it's a, it's a tiny fox, okay? This is a, it's a tiny fox. It's also a, a dental floss dispenser. So you, you open his head, and, then you, and there's like the dental floss, okay? The bell rummer's neck. Um, I've got, I've got perpy. Remember, perpy. So that's my thing. If you think this is creepy, I can't help you. I've got a bird. His name is Clint. This is Clint. Clint says hello. Say hello to Clint, everyone. Clint's going back. And Michael's my blackbird. So yeah, I'm not into the creepy doll, decapitated doll broken Victorian doll. I don't like where I refuse to wear clothing with skulls on it. I feel like it br brings bad karma. I don't like it. it. Creeps me out. Anything with death. I'm not, I'm sorry. Not obsessed with death. I like living. No, I just explained it, John. The reason why girls like Tana is because she's the cool girl in the group that I can remember. Like my friend Lanny was like that. Um, Lanny used to actually be on this channel like years ago. Blonde, cute, fun, always has great stories, always a laugh, a bit of a disaster. Although Lanny's not that much of a disaster. I think she's less of a disaster than, than Tana. I was a bit of a disaster when in, when I was 18, but that's a whole other story. Uh, I was way more wilder and did stupider, obnoxious things. But didn't we all, right? Um, no, Tana's like, you feel like you're having fun when you watch her. You feel like you're having a conversation with her when you watch her. That's why it works. And she feels like one of your friends that you can, you already have an equivalent archetype with um, or an equivalent archetype of in your friend group. Mind you, that archetype doesn't tend, doesn't have a tendency to last. Like as you get into your late twenties, thirties, forties, you're less likely to hang out with party people because you're just usually, and not that you should stop partying, but you're not, you don't have the same, you don't place the same value on meeting up with strangers in a bar and getting wasted. And, you know, uh, it just, the, the novelty wears off, but I think more adults actually do need a good party now and then, but you don't want to be, and you know, like I would rather go to bed early because I have so much shit to do than go to a bar and like hope there's someone there that's, that can care about me. Like, it's like, and I don't really like drinking that much. So. Do I know Karina Kaur? No, I have no idea who that is. Yeah, it is good that she's reimbursing tickets because it was a disaster. And I don't think that that is entirely her fault. I think it's the management company, the event management company she hired. People sometimes blame one person for the failure of an event. I mean, that event took a lot of people to put together and they tried to do too much too quickly. And they, she made the mistake of inviting more people to come. That was dumb. She should have kept it for ticket holders only. So Eileen says, freaking love bunny. 
I can relate with her anxiety. Not all girls sound like Ariana Grande. <laughs> I like Bunny. Oh, I, I saw some of her videos a long time ago. She has too much energy back when she did product, product reviews. She still does. Um, but she is a little over the top and it is a little fake. Hello guys, it's Bunny. <laughs> you know, like it, it is like, yeah, it's not very authentic. But kids love that. Kids love high energy more so than adults. Adults are like, oh, God, can you just... That's why adults watch the news. That's why adults watch Anderson Cooper. Which is like the frequency as you get older and more mature, just you usually identify more with frequencies that are like this instead of like, eh! So you're like, shut the fuck up. I have to fucking... I've got bills to pay. I've got things to do. I've got a future to plan for. I have disappointments to contend with. Could you please make your energy a little bit more even? Thank you. Yeah, I did just sound like her because I've watched her enough. I, I'm pretty good at imitating people. <laughs> it's one of my talents I don't use a lot. Yeah, exactly. As Eileen said, I think some of her characters just trying to pull herself out of her depression and be pumped. Well, she knows it works or it did work in the past to capture people's attention because you have to get over the indifference hump in order to draw people in. And secondly, yeah, there's this weird twisted thing where when we act out the selves online, online sometimes that are our ideal selves or the, the selves that we wish we were instead of the selves that we are in our most intimate and private times. So um, I think, yeah, she probably forgets that she's depressed when she's sm all smiles. And there's actually some studies that support that. If you're ever feeling sad, as much as it's hard to force a smile, your brain follows your motions or your brain follows your, your facial movements. So you can actually smile your way out of a bad mood. So it's probably true that it's therapeutic for her to just not ruminate and overthink about the negative things, which I'm guaranteed teeing you probably 95% of the things she's upset about are not or over exaggerated or not valid. That unfortunately applies to most people with depression. You focus on the bad instead of focusing on the good. Um, so yeah, I think she, she doesn't realize how therapeutic it is for, therapeutic for her to, it is for her to put on a happy face. That's that you don't want to suppress your sadness, but maybe she just, that means that she needs to, be approach life in general more positively uh, and just her, her expectations thereof. Cause it's easy to make a video perfect, but you know, you're not life. You can't expect that kind of seamless flow out of just everyday existence or, you know, when you get bored or someone doesn't call you back or you're desensitized how much shit you've bought, you know? And, and if you're going based on like, Oh, once you have a lot of money, you're going to be happy. I think a lot of these YouTubers that make fortunes um, only to realize that it, only makes you have nicer things but it doesn't really change your whole existence they kind of have to get over that you know that lie that we are frequently sold in culture so um even if things uh even with things i don't care too much about uh like her makeup fits i watch her because i like her I, I watch her occasionally but yeah like uh blue spirit said or was it mr feel like sometimes her sometimes you know kind of juvenile what she's doing and I don't give a fuck about the squishy toys or the you know makeup palettes oh bye Sid I got recommended a Brit Brit Brittany Venti video who's Brittany Vent Venti I had to turn it off after a minute Brittany Venti? She's only, oh, wait, how many subscribers? Oh, she streams. I hope I don't get any copyright stuff from listening to these people. Real friends in real life. I, I met him in her right there. Where's her talking? I've given blowjobs for two to her boyfriends. Do you think that that conflicts at all or? What do you mean by that? I don't think that's conflicting. She was a young girl and she had a- Why did some people boyfriend. stream on YouTube gaming and other people don't? What does it take to stream on YouTube gaming? That's what I don't get. 
Oh, shoe on head. F shoe on head. Sorry. Um, did you listen to her Hefner video? No. Oh, you mean uh, Tana Maljo? Yes. I just don't want to get any copyright problems because I play audio. Sometimes it does pick it up and then it's like, oh, you use this person's footage without permission. Meanwhile, I'm like literally watching one second of it. Okay, let's see if we can inflate this a little more. Okay, stream's over. Oh yeah, I like this. Oh man, now I want to be in a pool. Man, there's like actually a wading pool not far from my house. Ooh! But it's for like people with kids that are 10 and under. What if I show up with my floaty? And they're like, let me in. Let me in. I'm all for float, let me in. Can't turn away a lady with a floaty. Let me in. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I swear to God. I'm going to go to the waiting pool park and I'll be like, oh, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for my kids to show up and float around for a half an hour. And then the kids will never show up. <laughs> Guys, like this video if you want me to show up at the waiting pool park near my house with my floaty and float. I'll turn on the live stream and like pretend that like a kid's coming and I'm like, oh, I'm just waiting. But maybe they'll be like, you can't bring that in here. I'll be like, why can't I bring my inflatable high heel? Are you guys monsters? Are you guys monsters? Don't be a monster. Thank you, Fran. You are the prettiest girl in the room. Now I got to take some photos for this on my private snap. And photos with this. What am I saying? Me carrying this down the street. <laughs> I can play soccer with this. Ah. Oh crap, I don't want to shut up. No, I'm shut up. <laughs> Here, wait, let's, let's prop this up properly.
Quick tip, Five Below is a great place to get some floaties too. Uh, can you take a selfie as if you were wearing it? I sure can, but it's gonna go on my private Snapchat. I wanted to take some Instagram photos with these. I swear to God, I'm going to the park. I'm busting into the wading pool. I'll be like, I'm waiting for my 12 year old, 10 year old. So you just, you don't mind. I'm just gonna have a moment floating around in the water. Thank you, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, rabbit. Pretty woman walking down the street. Pretty woman, the kind I like to meet. Pretty woman. No one, da, 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 da. no one could look as good as you, pretty woman. I don't know, it was bad. I don't know the whole lyrics. Um, it's probably made in China. Let's see where it's made. Kangaroo Games. Apparently only worth $20. Made in China. You got it right. Made in China, you guys see that? Okay, guys, thank you for your tip frame. I very much appreciate it. You appreciate it. You are the pretty woman in the room. There we go, actually. That's what you were saying. I should make a song. Pretty, prettiest girl in the chat room. Prettiest girl, thanks for your tip now. I don't know, I gotta come up with the rest of the lyrics. I'm just freestyling. So guys, I have work to do. I have a I have a waiting pool to invade. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna do that today, but I have to take photos with that. Um and uh finish my jello video. I just don't think I'm gonna finish it today. I think it's impossible. But We'll see what can happen. So thank you guys. Have a lovely day. Thank you again for the tip of frame. So I'll see you guys later. Bye. Thanks for the fun.